Hey guys, welcome to Strange Suspicion. If this is not your first time here, welcome back. Two things, guys. Okay, so I have discussed a few things that I got hundreds of emails dealing with, and I'm trying to narrow down and organize my next video to present to you. If there's anything specifically you would like me to cover, you can email me or you can comment down below. You guys are having great discussions in the comment section. There was a rumor about me already. Apparently another woman did true crime. I don't know if you're telling me she wore masks. I don't know if she wore makeup. Thousands of juggalos and juggalettes wear makeup, including myself, and thousands of people who have worked in the haunted house industry but true crime is a very dangerous thing to do on youtube especially when you're discussing crimes that are not solved and i don't want to be targeted by criminals you want answers i think i'm entitled you want answers i want the truth you can't handle the truth So getting right back into the Brian Koberger case, I think that it is very important to discuss certain things that I've received in my emails. So if you don't have my email address, I'll put it right here at the bottom of the screen. And you may email me for any reason at all. I'm gonna put a comment up on the screen. And this comment right here is from Ron Harvey. And he made a really good point. He was talking about how the University of Idaho put out a shelter in place. Then an hour and a half later, they lifted the shelter in place as if everybody was safe, as if they had caught their guy. But there was no arrest made for another month and a half. Brian has not only applied at the Moscow Police Department, but has been to the Moscow Police Department for an interview. I would think that that brings your DNA right up there to the Moscow Police Department, touching all kinds of things. You know, when you get interviewed, you touch the door, you touch the desk, you touch all kinds of things. And so the fact that Brian's DNA was on the knife sheath to me is absolutely irrelevant. Unless they have some kind of video proof and they have some proof of why they lifted that shelter in place. And Dylan, I can't trust that girl, she lied. And then when I realized she was on the same floor as Xana and Ethan. Allegedly. That was even weirder. Like she heard a whisper in a dog, but she didn't hear Xana who had almost her fingers severed off trying to grab the knife away from somebody or whatever it was. We don't even know that it was a knife. We just know there was a knife sheet there. From what I've heard, the injuries are way worse than a K-Bar knife. I did spend eight years in the United States Army, and I can tell you, I wasn't issued any kind of K-Bar, but I know in the Marines, they're issued a K-Bar. Brent Kolpaka was a Marine. One of the theories that I got in my emails was that Brent Kolpaka and Brian Koberger went to 1122 Queen Road to pick up cocaine, and it was due to Brian having headaches from his visual snow. So on both sides of his vision right here, it's all staticky fuzzy. But I can see like to about here on the sides. So if you had all this going on on the sides, I would feel like with his education in criminology, I earned four college degrees, including two masters. And you don't get to that level without knowing what you're doing. He is at the highest level of criminology. I really doubt that he had any interest in that. I mean, he saved somebody's life at his old work. <laughs> He's a vegan. Like, he won't even eat an animal. Why would he carve people up? But when he comes into the courtroom, guys, he seems really, really sure of himself. Well, let me just tell you what the email says. Brent Kopaka went with Brian Koberger to 1122 Queen Road and then Brent Kopaka went into the house and Brian drove around and he kept driving around waiting for Brent Kopaka to come out. And when he didn't, Brian left. I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. I believe that Brian Koberger 
at the PhD level had a lot of studying to do. And when I was in graduate school, I remember how hard it was to focus. And I remember how hard it was. I feel like Brian Koberger may have been listening to a scanner app and it had nothing to do with him and Brent Kopaka. I think maybe that rumor has to do with the fact that Brian Koberger had a known past chemical dependency. Don't quote me, but I think it was heroin. Brian Koberger has come a long way in his life. He's lost a lot of weight. He's dealt with a lot of things um, physically. He's dealt with depression. I can't see who would have murdered four people. I think there would be like an awkwardness about him. I think he would be a little off. I don't think you can cut four people into pieces and then act normal. I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm very educated in psychology. Just, I don't think Brian Koberger did this. I'm just gonna go on record and say it. I would be very surprised if he did. We don't have all the information. We're not the police and we're not the FBI. These kids are young, but they use social media like really, really foolishly. Like send things over Snapchat they think are always gone, which apparently Snapchat is a thing in this case. And I have heard that there was a flash drive that allegedly Bethany has, and that's why she doesn't want to testify. She just wants to hand over a flash drive. There was talk of a snuff film being made called Kill the Clones. And there was talk that Maddie and Kaylee wanted to be in that movie. And they would play a woman and her clone, I guess. And maybe it was filmed in that house. Maybe things went too far. Maybe it was a regular horror movie and turned into a snuff movie. But it sure seemed to me that a lot of these kids were looking at their phones all at the same time at the grub truck. Even the three boys who were underage drinking in the band field were laughing and looking at their phones. Acting really strange, turning around a lot. It was weird. And Saeed, that kid with the bushy eyebrows, I, I have a bad feeling about that kid altogether. I counted all his nervous laughter in my video. <laughs> I, it, it's completely apparent the kid was out of sorts. When I was young, if I came in contact with the police, I wouldn't be that relaxed. <laughs> I'd be pretty freaked out. Visual snow, he would not have been able to do this by himself. 